we will begin shortly. Please uh, be ready for the uh, discussion. Uh, baik Bapak Ibu uh, sebelum kita mulai uh, nanti uh, kita akan memulai sesi uh, simposium ini dengan penaparan dari uh, Miss uh, Freiberger dan uh, nanti akan ada sesi tanya jawab jadi kami persilakan nanti kalau ingin bertanya dapat uh, bertanya dalam bahasa Indonesia Uh, jadi saya akan coba terjemahkan kepada narasumber uh, pertanyaan Bapak Ibu sekalian. Oke, okay, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps we'll try to uh, greet uh, Miss Freiberger. Are you with us? Yes, good morning from Germany and good afternoon to Indonesia. All right, thank you Miss Freiberger. Uh, yes, I suppose it's early in the morning uh, on uh, at the Germany. Yeah. Okay, it's how are okay. you today? Yeah, thanks. I'm fine. I'm very fine. And I would prefer to be yeah in present in Indonesia because I remember very very gladly when I was in Indonesia last springtime and. Thank you for being there again. Okay, that's great. Uh, so we have uh, our guest here from uh, a number of various universities from Indonesia. Uh, we have the vice chancellors of the academics from uh, universities across the West region of Indonesia. So I think this is a great gathering with uh, great people uh, talking about great things. Yeah, I think so. So it is a pleasure for FIBA and for me that we can contribute to your conference. And when I look to the screen, I think there are some familiar faces I think I saw in springtime. So hello to everybody. Okay, Bapak Ibu dapat salam dari uh, Ms. Freiberger. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Uh, Freiberger has greeted us, all of us uh, that are present here today. So, we shall begin in uh, uh, shortly. Okay, so you tell me when I can share my presentation and then whenever you want, I can start. Okay, perhaps uh, I think you should be uh, the one... Uh, presenting with your slide because I think you have yeah. more control over your slides. Okay, so I now will share my screen. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I think uh, we can start the symposium uh, right now. So to Ms. Freiberger, uh, you have 40 minutes for your presentation and then uh, we will begin a discussion session uh, with all of the attendees here. Okay. Please, you may begin. Okay. So, again, thank you for inviting. Yes, I want to show, want to take your journey. I, we have a short introduction, introduction and um, short definition of high-class university, world-class university, because this is the topic of today. 
to become a world class university towards quality parameter. Then I want to show you some characteristics and I want to talk to you about the role of quality parameter. And then after this, the challenges and where we're heading to future. And then I'm looking forward to an interesting question and answer session. So the short introduction has the two topics, the definition and the importance of the quality parameter in higher education. As I told you before, very, very nice to meet you. So let us start with the definition. So world-class university can be broadly defined as an institution that is globally renewed for its research, has diverse and talented students and faculty base, and also consistently delivers high quality education to recognize worldwide. Such universities offer feature rankings, research excellence, and global perspective. What does this mean? So it is that they appear in the top international university rankings, like the Cool S World Ranking, the academic ranking of the World University, and also the Time Higher Education University ranking. Search excellence means that they often drive innovation, producing high impact research publication and securing substantial research funding, which is very important. Also, there has a strong international outlook, attracting students and also faculty from around the world and fostering global corporations. So what is the importance of this quality parameter in higher education? Though there are some aspects which are crucial for several reasons. This is, for one thing, setting the standards, which means a benchmark against which institution can measure the performance in various areas from academic output to facility to services. By understanding, we stand in cooperation to global standards universities and can identify areas for improvement. Also, the guiding improvement. This guides university to a color collating resources making informed decisions of the program development, faculty hiring, and infrastructure investment. A very important aspect is also building reputation. Reputation is written for the university. It can influence everything from the ability to attract top talent, both students and faculty, and also securing research funding. A quality parameter can also help universities understand how they are decisive in the wider academic community and where they need to enhance their reputation. Then another aspect is informing students. Many students use the quality manager as a part of their decision-making process when choosing where to study. A recognized quality parameter can provide with an objective view of an institutional strength and also weakness. Driving excellence means promote a culture of excellence institution that strive to match or exceed the benchmark, often push them to envelope, leading to innovations and in teaching, research, and community engagement. So let us have a short look to the development of the universities, how they come to different 
um, how they come to different excellence and what excellence was defined before. So we start with Plato Academy and also the university in India, Nalanda and Takish Miller, when it was the first of the fourth century before Christ. And then we have the seven to 10th century. These were the golden age of the Islamic institutions. It was al Qarabin in Morocco and al Ashira in Egypt. These universities play a pivotal role in precising and advancing knowledge during this period. And then we come to Europe, to the medieval European university, which were Bologna and Oxford. You all know about maybe the Bologna process. And then we have the Renaissance. These are the inter um, the enlightenment of the university, they begin to play a crucial role in the advancement and the science of humanity studies and emphasizes religion and also secular education. Then we have the industrial age universities, which means technical institutes and research university emerge to cater the demands of the industrialization. So the Humboldtian model and emphasizing utility between teaching and research becomes popular, especially in Germany. And then we have the 20th century. This was the global expansion of the university multiply worldwide. In this century, the US system was, integra was integrated research and library art and becomes influential. And in the 21st century, digital revolutions, universities expand into the digital realm with online courses, with displays and massive open online courses, which called MOOCs, and make quality in education and also accessible worldwide. Though this was a short journey through the development of the university. So when we come to the end to the status now of the university, the rise of need of benchmarking and standardization comes up. There were the aspects of increasing global mobility. We all know that more accessible in the 20th century, there was notable increase in students studying abroad. The mobility heightened the need for the standardization to recognize and to compare qualification across the borders. Then it is the economic competition. A nation realizes the connection between higher education, innovation, and economic growth. The university becomes central players in national economic strategies. And also the desire to have universities that could compare on a global scale. Then we have the accountability and the transparency. This is important and investment in the higher education, both in public and in governments, demand for more accountability from institutions. So benchmarking provided a way to measure the return on investment. And then we have the quality insurance. So the quality insurance came up and there were a number of higher education institutions that they see and they did the need for quality insurance mechanism. Accreditation bodies, both national and international, began to play an important role in standardization of quality 
and measurements. And then we have the global ranking, which I say it's an instrument of quality assurance, especially of external quality assurance. So the late 20s and the early 21 centuries saw the rise of global universities. And then there was also the rise of the rankings, like the QS and the Times Higher Education Ranking, what I mentioned before. These rankings further fuel the competition among the universities and stress the importance of standardization. So let us see what are the characteristics of the world-class universities. So <clears throat> there we have the quality and the impact in especially research excellence. The world-class universities are often at the forefront of groundbreaking research. So research outputs are frequently cited by peers indicating the impact and the relevance of the work. They often secure substantial research grants, attracting both public and private investment, and they have innovative research facilitated. These institutions typically host state-of-the-art laboratories, and they also the research centers, the libraries, enabling cutting-edge research. Then we have the high quality in teaching and learning. This aspect is the pedagogical innovations, which means the adaptation of innovative teaching methods, integrating technology and experimental learning in enhanced students' outcome. An outstanding faculty they employ often leading experts in their respective fields, ensuring that students receive the top tier instructions. And they have a low students to faculty ratio, which means they emphasize personalized learning experience and often reflecting more intimate class size and better student teaching and interactions. So the next aspect is the global reputational influence. This means they are on global high-ranking global university ranking system by subject and overall. So we all know there is always a special flow post on ranking system. So one cannot see, uh, one cannot say that the ranking is the only important thing. The next thing is partnership. Said they collaborate with other top institutions worldwide, facilitating students exchange joint services and also projects and some more. And then conferences and seminars as you did all go. So institutions frequently host and participate in international conferences and contributing to global academic research and dialogues. Another aspect is the international and diverse campus. This means a, a hallmark of this is diverse, diverse student population, drawing learners more over the world, fostering a multicultural learning environment. And also the faculty diversity, which is often represented a mix of nationalities and backgrounds, bringing a wealth to global perspective to the institution and a global curriculum. The curriculum at each university often emphasizes global issues, perspective, and also solutions. Then we have the aspect of the comprehensive support system. This means that this university tends to provide a wide array of support services for students ranging from academic consulting also to the mental health resources. They often have both strong academic 
and active alumni networks and also provide mentorship networking opportunities and even employment leave for these graduates. And I think the last effect of this is the strategic intervention, which means they are future oriented. They have a clear strategic vision for the future and they have a choice to remain at the forefront of higher education trends and innovations. And they have strong governments, governance. Usually have a robust government structure that emphasizes accountability and transparency and excellence. And when you all you hear this criteria, and if you remember, these are also some key effect, uh, some key facts when we are talking about our assessment guide when we do the external quality assurance. So the next is, I forgot to run the slides, but you get the slides in sure afterwards and then you can read and remember this. So the next is the role of the quality barometer. What is the role there? So we have the three special aspect. It is identifying gaps in current standards. And it is also providing a roadmap for continuous improvement. And it is ensuring a transparent and accountability system. Let us come to the identifying gaps in current standards. So these are the benchmarks and the performance Quality barometer allows institutions to compare themselves against standardized criteria or performance of peer institutions. By doing so, they can recognize areas where they fall short. They can highlight areas of concern beyond just academic performance. Quality parameters can also highlight efficiencies of other aspects, such as student service, infrastructure, faculty, quality, qualification, or resource facilities. And there is the feedback loop. A comprehensive post environmental also incorporates feedback from various stakeholders, including the students, the faculty, the alumni, the employers. This multi Financial feedback can offer insights into areas and previously overlooked by internal assessments. When we are looking to the roadmap for continuous improvement, we all know this is a very important aspect, which means setting clear objectives based on the gaps of identified institution can establish clear measurable objectives for improvement, whether it's in research output, enhancing pedagogical methods, or improving student support service. These goals can guide future efforts. Then we have the resources. Knowing where the gaps are allows institutions to allocate resources more effectively and channeling funds, manpower, and other resources to arise that requires attention. Timeline for achievement, very important. With the barometer of quality as a guided tool, the university can set time bounds objectives, ensuring that the improvement are not just experiential, but are actively pursued and achieved. And the third is the ensuring transfer and accountability system. Openness to the stakeholders. Yes, a public quality barometer ensures 
that all stakeholders from prospective students and policy makers have a clear view of an institution, of the performance, and about the benchmark. This transparency can foster trust and confidence in the institution. Then we have the data-driven decision. A quality barometer emphasizes the importance of data in decision-making processes, rather than relying on anecdotal evidence or intuition decisions become rooted in clear quantified metrics. This is a very important thing. So this is where you can lead and walk around your roadmap. Accountability and external bodies. Many, many quality barometers are associated with external accrediting or ranking bodies. Regularly measuring up to these benchmarks and choose institutions remains accountability not only to their internal stakeholders, but also to these external entities. Facilitating and external cooperations. This means when university adhere to recognized benchmarks, it becomes easier for them to establish collaborations and partnership with other reputated institutions. Such affiliates often demand evidence of quality and consistency in academic and administrative processes. So you see, this is a lot of things and how it is all the time. These are challenges university. Talking about the challenges, there we have the different of in educational systems and cultures. This means a variety of standards. Educational systems around the world are very greatly from curriculum to teaching as from administrative structure to grading scale. When you did the accreditation, you, I think, have experience in this. And there is no one size fits all barometer, may not capture the growth of each system effectively. Then you have the culture difference. There are cultural significance of education, teaching styles, and learning processes across the region. For example, some culture may emphasize the crude memorization while other prioritize critical thinking and debate. And this has to be in a balance. And then for sure, sometimes are also the language barriers. So potential for prioritizing methods over the real quality. So teaching to test, similar to how some educational system might prioritize teaching to students to perform well in standardized tests over competent education, universities might prioritize action that boost their metrics rather than focusing on genius quality improvement. Overemphasizes quantitative data. While quantitative metrics such as application counts or students to teacher ratio are easily measurable, they don't always capture the sense of the quality. A university could produce numerous of papers, but if they lack impact and relevance, the sheer quantity might be misleading. Neglect of essential aspects. Some vital aspects of education, like fostering a sense of community and promoting mental well being, are hard to quantify. A focus on metrics might sideline these essential but less measurable attributes. And then we have the sub 
subjectivity in certain quality measurement. Then the perception based measurements. Many rankings rely on reputation survey, as I told you before, and also on a lot of money. While C's offer insights, they are also subjective, and we can be influenced by branding, marketing, for as much as by genius quality. Then we have the variability of implementation. Qualitative metrics like speed and satisfaction or teaching quality are often for interpretation. But once students or evaluators see it as high quality teaching might differ from another perspective. And we don't have to forget bias and incredibility. There are potential for bias in subjective evaluation, whether it is consciousness or unconscious. For example, never universities are sourced from region historical underrepresented in global rankings might face challenges in getting new recognition for their genius efforts and accomplishment. So, where is the future? Where are we heading to the future? I will say evolving definition of a world class university. This means in future, the definition of a world class university is evolving. Traditionally, such universities were recognized primarily for their high quality research, experienced faculty, and academic performance of students. However, the evolving criteria expand, extend beyond these classification metrics, which are a closing emphasis on inclusivity and diversity, social impact, and global cooperation. And this means that the multicultural and the inclusive environment is gaining presentance. Universities are increasingly weighted on the commitment and offering opportunities to students from diverse backgrounds. So when we're thinking about the social impact, Institutions are evaluated on their contribution to addressing social, environmental, and economic challenge, reflecting a shift towards the ethical and the social responsibility of universities. And we also have the global uh, collaborations. The importance of international partnerships, networks, and also collaboration in research and education is heightening and fostering a global community of learners and researchers. And I think these are the common, these are the upcoming criteria for being a world class university also. In the next point, we have technology. The increasing importance of technology is reshaping the future at an unprecedented rate, particularly in the field of education and learning. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, these are instrumental personalized learning experience, analyzing academic progress and facilitating administrative progress. Thereby, they enhance the overall experience. Virtual and augmented reality, say, the revolution teaching methodologies by providing immense learning and experience enabling students to impact with the content in real time. Therefore, we come to online education. So the future should 
it's pointing towards a blended and online learning model. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated this change, this year, highlighting the flexibility and the accessibility of online education. Accessibility of online education, democratic learning by providing access to quality education to education to the learners worldwide, regardless of geographical constraints, diversity of the courses. The, the online courses and the programs allow learners to explore a wide range of subjects and acquire diverse skills. And then we have the hybrid learning model, a mix of online and personal learning. Is likely to be the norm of the future and allowing for more and flexible, customized learning everywhere with a great experience. And then we have the lifelong learning aspect. This means it becomes a cornerstone in involving educational lens owing to the rapid pace of the technology at once and the changing in the nature of the digital world. But there we have the skill development. And also we have the learning platforms and the career and work advancement. So, what is the conclusion? I think the conclusion is the future is directing us towards an inclusive and globally connected educational ecosystem, which is deeply intertwined with technology. So we cannot put the development of the technology away. The definition of a world class university is evolving to encompass social responsibility and diversity and global cooperation. The role of technology, online education, and lifelong learning is paramount in shaping the learning environment, making education more accessible, personalized, and aligned with the dynamic needs of the society. And this I think this continual pursuit of the knowledge, which will be the key drivers in navigating the future and landscapes of education and learning. So all in all conclusion for, yes, what is the quality barometer to becoming a world-class university? I think in conclusion, the transforming of landscapes of education and technology are indicating the critical importance of adopting a dynamic evolving of quality parameter. If you remember what I say, not one size fits all. It means adaption to changes. It allows them, the educational institutions, and learning platforms to adapt swiftly to come to technology and advancement, advancement, social needs, and the ever-changing global environment. This is the reality. And then it ensures that the evaluation metrics remain relevant and reflective of the current trend and demands, and then can provide innovations. And this ensures, in my opinion, excellence and relevance. It maintains that high standards of education and ensures the continual, re continual relevance of the curriculum, the teaching methods, and also the learning experience. It is pivotal measuring effectiveness and impacts of education in real time, which is very important, 
and thereby facilitating intermediate improvements and innovations. And what we are talking about, inclusivity and diversity. Quality barometers is essentially in ensuring that the diverse needs and potentials of the goal global learners community are met and that education is equitable and inclusive and also the sustainability and ethical con consideration it promotes the sustainability and the social responsibility by evaluating institution on their contribution to the ecological conversation social well-being and the ethical consideration. So, thank you so much for listening to me. I think I'm just in time or I'm not running over and I hope this is good. And now I'm really looking forward for the discussion or some questions. And whenever you have question after on this question now, then feel free to contact me and write me an email so I will answer it to you. So thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you, Ms. Freiberg. Uh, a round of applause for our uh, for Ms. Freiberger, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, so actually that's a lot to take in. Uh, so, uh, you were telling us that uh, the rise of the world-class university from the until the future, the changing landscape of uh, education itself, where we have to focus more on the inclusivity, uh, diversity, and um, impact and social responsibility, and as well as the changing uh, the technological advancement that has reshaped our education. Okay, uh, baiklah mungkin Bapak Ibu, uh, Ms. Freiberger, I have to translate a bit of your uh, yeah. lecture to the uh, audience. Okay, Bapak Ibu, jadi uh, cukup panjang ceritanya mulai dari uh, the rise, apa, kemunculan World Class University hingga bagaimana uh, barometer dari uh, suatu World Class University itu bergeser dari yang sebelumnya Uh, fokus kepada uh, high quality uh, research ataupun uh, performa dari mahasiswa ataupun dari uh, dosen atau staff mengajarnya dan sini di sini kita bergeser kepada uh, sustainability aspek-aspek uh, seperti social impact kemudian juga diversity atau uh, keragaman dan uh, inclusivity di mana uh, semua orang itu uh, harus diberikan kesempatan untuk dapat uh, mengakses ke pendidikan dan hal ini dibantu juga dengan adanya uh, kemajuan teknologi yang mem memungkinkan dilakukannya uh, pelaksanaan perkuliahan itu atau akademik itu secara online dan dibantu dengan uh, kemajuan teknologi seperti uh, AI ataupun machine learning oke okay, uh, mungkin uh, untuk Sesi diskusi saya buka dengan uh, pertanyaan pertama mungkin. Uh, so Ms. Freiberger, we're uh, on to the discussion session. Uh, we might have uh, some question. Oke okay, Bapak Ibu mungkin ada pertanyaan. Uh, silakan dalam bahasa Indonesia boleh. Uh, you may ask in uh, Indonesian language. I will try to uh, translate it. Uh, into uh, English. Oh yes, uh, silakan. Baik, terima kasih atas kesempatan bahasa Indonesia aja ya. Uh, kita ini kan saya tetap concern kepada kesiapan kita untuk upgrade ya. Uh, bagaimana kita bisa uh, minimal ditargetkan masuk ke 1000 QS ranking ya. Nah, kira-kira dari standar uh, yang berbeda-beda, ini apa langkah-langkah strategis untuk memasuki uh, persiapan nih, persiapan kemudian ke proses uh, sampai nanti kita bisa menghasilkan masuk ke dalam uh, 1000 uh, QS ranking. 
itu pertama. Oke, okay, Miss Freiberger, the first question is uh, perhaps you would like to elaborate on how uh, our nation universities in Indonesia to be able to get into the uh, world class university ranking despite our challenges, despite uh, the condition of our uh, nation. Perhaps you, you would like to uh, elaborate a bit about uh, how we can get to uh, that level. Okay, you may uh, answer the question. Yeah, yeah. thank you for the question. It is an interesting question and you can be sure that I often were asked this question. So as you, as I saw, um, show you the slide of the rankings, there was, I think, and uh, I show you the first challenges. And there was the University of Switzerland. It was the ATH Zurich, as you know, thesis. And you see, it has 88%. These are the only and on university from Europe with our on this ranking. And it was years ago I made a research about this ranking. This is I want to say before. So the most of this ranking are focused on research and research funding. Though this is, they, yeah, they gave, for example, I think it was Princeton, it gave the whole amount to one university which Germany for the whole country. So what one that was I want to say is, I think if you, as I showed you the criterion, if you do and you see, especially the across and the over border accreditation, collaboration, um, as I also say, the student exchange, the faculty exchange. I see these are the first steps that you can be on the way of it. And I'm sure that, yeah, in years ago, this is what I told you, there will be a lot of criteria which are important for the first and for the ranking and be on the first level of the ranking. And I think what I recognized the last two, three years from Indonesia, you did a very, very good step because you open your university to international accreditation, to international bodies, to, yes, to international students. You make also programs with international focus. And I think this is the way to this step. But and this is what you should continue. Because, yeah, I think it is a long, long way to go to the first of the 10 or the 15. So the University of Vienna is I think it's uh, 78 in the world class ranking. But as you know, they did it for centuries to come there. I think Indonesia is in a good, good way, what I told you before, to do these steps and to look over your borders, to have clear strategies that you say, we want to come to the world, reputation, and then this is also the way to the world, yes, ranking. Thank you, Ms. Freiberger. So shortly, uh, we can say that the first step is to open ourselves to the world and uh, to improve our global collaboration, uh, global cooperation. Is that true? 
Yeah. Okay, I will translate it to the audience. Yeah. Jadi uh, okay. langkah pertamanya Pak adalah uh, dengan meningkatkan kerjasama atau kolaborasi dari uh, universitas kita secara internasional, baik itu melalui kita mengirimkan mahasiswa keluar ataupun kita mendatangkan mahasiswa luar uh, ke dalam. Jadi tadi beberapa kali sudah dicontohkan oleh Miss Freiberger uh, beberapa universitas uh, dengan Uh, ranking dunia tadi begitu. Uh, mungkin untuk uh, maybe the next question, pertanyaan berikutnya. Uh, I think we still have four minutes. Oke, okay, uh, please. Terkait, terima kasih. Jadi terkait dengan diversity tadi, apakah untuk bisa akreditasi internasional ini juga harus bisa menerima LGBT dan ateis? Terima kasih. Okay, um, this might be a sensitive question, actually, uh, but I think uh, this this needs to be asked. Okay, uh, to be in the world ranking, uh, uh, it was mentioned that there is the issue of diversity. Uh, do you think uh, in Indonesia, where we are strictly adhered to uh, uh, Eastern values? Uh, do we have to accept uh, LGBTs or or support LGBTs or uh, uh, that kind of inclusivity? Uh, uh, you may uh, answer the question. Yeah. No, I think diversity is not only LGBT or it is not only um, what should I say gender. Okay, it is inclusion, inclusion, but to be honest, when I was in Indonesia and I visited you and also my project manager, when they are there for accreditation, they see a very diverse surrounding, they see a very diverse um, uh, people, or let me see, Um, habit, how you deal with foreigners. This is all the things which means this has to be in life. Diversity is, you should not focus only on one aspect of diversity. I think diversity means also, yeah, yeah, you have several religious universities in Indonesia. You have um, several people would say come from India, Malaysia and all this. So this is also diversity. I think the point is to be open for cross-border things and which and not only focus on one aspect. Okay, thank you. Uh, such great answer, uh, Ms. Freiberger. So, uh, shortly, uh, it's just, it's not Uh, it's only one aspect uh, that uh, LGBT is one aspect of uh, diversity, but yeah. there's also yeah. another aspect of diversity, such yeah. as yeah. Uh, racial, uh, yeah. racial thing like that, or something like that, or people that uh, come from another country with different cultures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, I will try to convey to the audience. Uh, baik Pak, jadi yeah. uh, dalam hal ini. Uh, kita tidak harus fokus pada satu aspek diversitas, jadi uh, masih banyak aspek-aspek diversitas lain seperti uh, warna kulit ataupun uh, budaya jadi uh, mungkin so uh, in short we can stay true to ourselves, uh, right Ms. Freiberger, we can still uh, hold on to our values uh, yeah. while in the, at the same yeah. time we're accepting uh, other people with uh, yeah which is different with us, oke. Okay. Jadi kita juga uh, pada intinya ada bersikap terbuka terhadap mereka yang ingin uh, belajar, terhadap mereka yang uh, ingin dengan background yang berbeda uh, mencoba belajar dengan kita ataupun kita belajar dengan mereka uh, itu sudah termasuk diversitas yang disinggung pada uh, kriteria dari World Class University tadi. Oke, okay, uh, I think Uh, we have arrived at the time. Uh, I would like to 
thank you for Ms. Freiberger for such amazing uh, deliveries and uh, reassuring answers. Okay, uh, I think a round of applause once again for Ms. Freiberger. I think that's it for today, Ms. Freiberger. Thank you for your yeah. participation. Thank you for your insights. Uh, we would like to uh, have a lot more conversation, but uh, the yeah. thing is we are limited in terms of time, so in terms of duration. So uh, we, unfortunately, we have to close this session. So yeah. once again, thank you for uh, your participation and uh, good morning. Uh, yeah. Baik para hadirin, uh, terima kasih uh, telah berpartisipasi pada sesi ini. Uh, saya ucapkan, uh, saya tutup dengan uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Ms. Freiberger. Thank you too much to you. Again, have a fruitful conference and a lot of insights. Yes, and all my best. Germany. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Big thank you for our esteemed speaker who has joined for this international symposium and also our moderator Bapak Firman Apriansyah. Bapak Ibu hadirin yang berbahagia, sebagai rasa syukur atas terlaksananya kegiatan kita pada siang hari ini dan untuk menambah keberkahan atas simposium yang telah terlaksana, mari bersama kita mengucapkan lafal hamdalah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Baik, sebelum kita tutup, kami ingin menginformasikan kepada Bapak Ibu Delegasi Wakil Rektor bahwa setelah kegiatan ini kami persilakan untuk dapat berkumpul di uh, lobi Rektorat Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji untuk melakukan kunjungan lapangan ke salah satu lokasi di Pulau Bintan yaitu di Banyantri. Kemudian kami informasikan juga kepada Bapak Ibu bahwa nanti malam kita akan uh, makan malam untuk menikmati hidangan seafood seperti uh, gonggong ya Pak ya. Jadi nanti teman-teman panitia akan mengkoordinir Bapak Ibu untuk uh, menuju ke restoran seafood. Dan demikian rangkaian acara kita pada hari ini. Kami mengucapkan terima kasih sekali lagi atas kunjungan Bapak Ibu Delegasi Forum Wakil Rektor Bidang Akademik BKSPTN Wilayah Barat. Terima kasih kepada narasumber dan juga moderator. Anak kuda makan selasih, selasih dimakan di atas batu. Akhir kata kami ucapkan terima kasih. Sampai bertemu di lain waktu. Dari lingga ke Pulau Benan, singgah membeli si ikan teri. Kalau salah mohonlah kami ini dimaafkan, jangan disimpan di dalam hati. Terima kasih sekali lagi atas segala perhatian. Mohon maaf atas segala kekurangan. Kami akhiri dengan wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.